Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Microsoft Ignite. Brought to you by Cohesity. Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Microsoft Ignite 2019. We are the Cube. we are here at the Cohesity booth in the middle of the show floor at the Orange County Convention Center. 26,000 people from around the globe here. It's a very exciting show. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Stu Miniman. We are joined by Francesca Lazzeri. She is a PhD, machine learning scientist, and cloud advocate at Microsoft. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Direct Thank from you. Cambridge, so we're an all Boston table exactly. here. I love it, I love it. We are in the most innovative cluster, I think. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> in the world, probably. So, so uh, two words we're hearing a lot of here at, at the show, machine learning, deep learning. Can you just describe, de define them for us here and tell us the difference between machine learning and deep learning? Yeah, this is a great question and I have to say a lot of my customers ask me this question very, very often because I think right now there are uh, many different terms such as uh, deep learning, as you said, uh, machine learning, AI, that have been used uh, more or less in the same way, but they are not really the same thing. So uh, machine learning is a, a um, uh, portfolio, I would say, of algorithms. And when you say uh, algorithms, I mean really statistical models uh, that you can use uh, to do some, to run some data analysis, so you can use these uh, uh, algorithms on your data, and these are going to produce what we call an output. Output are the results. So uh, deep learning is just uh, a type of machine learning that has a different structure. Uh, we call it deep learning because there are many different layers in a neural network, which is again a type of uh, machine learning uh, algorithm, and uh, it's very interesting because it doesn't look at the linear relationship within uh, like uh, different variables, but it, it looks at different uh, ways to train itself and learn something. So you have to think just about deep learning as a, a type of machine learning, and then we have uh, AI. AI is just on top of everything. AI is a way of uh, building application uh, on top of machine learning models, and they run on top of uh, machine learning algorithms. So it's a way AI of consuming uh, intelligent models. Yeah, so Francesca, uh, I know we're going to be talking to Jeffrey Snover tomorrow about a topic, responsible AI. Uh, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about how you know, Microsoft is making sure that unintentional biases or you know, challenges with data uh, lead the, the, the machine learning to do things or have biases that we wouldn't want to otherwise? Yes, yeah, so I think that Microsoft is actually investing a lot in responsible AI. Uh, because I have to say, as a data scientist, as a machine learning scientist, I think that it's very important to understand what the model is doing and why uh, is uh, uh, giving us a specific results. So uh, in my team, we have a, a toolkit which is called the Interpretability Toolkit, and it's really a way to unpack um, machine learning models. So it's a way of opening machine learning models and understand uh, what are the different relations between the different variables, the different data points, so it's an easy way through different type of visualization that you can understand why your model is giving you specific results so that you get that visibility as a data scientist but also as a final consumer, final users of this AI application. And I think that visibility is the most important thing to prevent uh, you know, unbiased, uh, sorry, biased application and to, to make sure that our uh, results are fair for everybody. So there are some technical tools that uh, uh, we can use for sure. I can tell you as a data scientist that uh, bias and uh, unfairness starts with the data. Uh, you have to make sure that the data is representative enough of the population that you are targeting with your AI applications, but this sometimes is not possible. That's why it's important to create some services, some toolkits uh, that uh, are going to allow you, as a, again, as a data scientist, as a user, to understand what the AI application or the machine learning model is doing. 
So what's the solution? If, it, if the problem, if the root of the problem is the data in the first place, how do we fix this? Because this is such an important issue in, in technology today. Yes, uh, so there are a few ways that you can uh, use. Uh, so first of all, I want to say that it's not a, a issue that you can really fix. I would say that, uh, again, as a data scientist, there are a few things that you can do in order to check that your AI application is doing a good job. Uh, in terms of uh, fairness again. And uh, so these uh, few steps are, as you said, the data. So most of the time people uh, or customers, they just uh, use their own data. Something that is very helpful is also looking at the external type of data and also make sure that, again, as I said, that your data is representative enough of the entire population. Uh, so for example, if you are collecting data from a specific category of uh, people, of a specific age, from a specific geography of uh, you have to make sure that you understand that the results are not the general results are results that the machine learning algorithm learn from that target population and uh, so it's it's important again to look at different type of data different type of uh, uh, data sets and use if you can also external data and then of course uh, this is just the first step as a second step that you can do you can always uh, make sure that you check uh, your model with a business expert, with data expert. So sometimes we, we have data scientists that work in silos. They do not really communicate what they are doing. And I think that uh, this is something that you need to change within your company, within your organization. You have to always make sure that uh, data scientists, machine learning scientists are working closely with data expert, business experts, and everybody is talking. Again, to make sure that we understand what we are doing. Okay. Uh, there were so many things announced at the show this week. Uh, in, in your space, uh, what are some of the, the, the highlights of the, the things that people should be taking away from Microsoft Ignite? So I think uh, that uh, Azure Machine Learning Platform uh, has been announcing a lot of uh, updates. Uh, I, I love the product because I think it's a very dynamic product. Uh, there is a, what we now call the designer, which is a new version of the old Azure Machine Learning Studio is a, a drag and drop uh, tool. So it's uh, uh, a tool that is great for people who do not want to code too much or who are just getting started with uh, machine learning. And you can uh, really create hand-to-hand -hand machine learning pipelines uh, with these uh, tools in just a matter of a few minutes. Uh, the nice thing is that you can also deploy your machine learning models and this is going to create uh, an API for you. And uh, this API can be used uh, by by you or by other developers in your company to just uh, call the model that you uh, that you deployed. So as, as I mentioned before, this is really the part where AI is arriving and uh, uh, is, is the part where you create application on top of your uh, models. So this is a great announcement uh, and uh, uh, we also created a uh, algorithm uh, cheat sheet that is a really nice map that you can use to understand based on your question, based on your data, what's the best machine learning algorithm What's the best designer module that you can use to build your end-to-end -end machine learning solution? So this, I would say, is, a, is my highlight. And then, of course, in terms of Azure Machine Learning, um, there are other updates. We have uh, the Azure Machine Learning Python SDK, which is more for pro data scientists who, who wants to uh, to create uh, customized uh, models, so models that they have to build from scratch. And uh, for them, it's very easy because it's a Python-based uh, environment where they can just uh, uh, build their model, train it, test it, deploy it. So it's a, it, when I say it's a very dynamic and flexible tool because it's really a tool on the, pla on the cloud that is uh, targeting more like business people, data analysts, but also pro data scientists and AI developers. So this is great to see and uh, I'm very, very excited for that. So in addition to your work as a cloud advocate at Microsoft, you are also a mentor to research and postdoc students yes. at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. So I tell us a little bit more about that work in terms of what kinds of, what kinds of mentorship do you provide and, and what your impressions are of this yeah. young generation, that a young generation of scientists that's now coming up. 
Yes, so that's a, another a wonderful question because uh, one of the main goal of my team is uh, actually working with academic uh, type of audience and uh, we started this uh, about a year ago. So it's, uh, we are again a team of uh, cloud advocates, uh, developers, uh, data scientists, and we do not want to work only with uh, big enterprises, but we want to work with uh, academic uh, type of institutions. And when I say academic, of course, I mean uh, the, some of the best universities, like I've been working a lot with MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Harvard, and also now I've been working with the Columbia University in, uh, in New York. And um, with all of them, I work with both a PhD and postdoc students. And uh, most of the time, uh, what I try to help them with is uh, change their mindset because these are all brilliant students that need just to understand how they can uh, translate what they have learned uh, during their years of uh, study uh, and also uh, their uh, technical skill set into uh, the real world. And when I say the real world, I mean more like uh, building applications. So there is this uh, um, sort of uh, uh, skill transfer that needs to be done. And uh, again, we, Working with these brilliant people, I have to say, is something that is easy to do because sometimes they just need to work on a specific project that I, I created for them, so I give data to them, and then we work together in a sort of lab environment, and we build end-to-end -end solutions. But from a knowledge perspective, from a, um, I would say, technical perspective, these are all excellent uh, uh, students, so it's really, I find myself in a position in which I'm mentoring them, I, I prepare them for the uh, industry, uh, because most of them, they want to become a data scientist, machine learning scientist, but I have to say that I also learn a lot from them, because at the end of the day, when we build these solutions, it's, a, uh, it's really a way to, to build something, a project, uh, an app together, and then we also see, that the beauty of these is also that we also see how other people are using that uh, to uh, build something even better. So it's, it's an amazing experience, and I feel very lucky that I'm uh, in Cambridge, where, as you know, we have uh, the best schools. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, Fra Francesca, you, you've dug in some really interesting things. Uh, you know, I, I'd love to get just a little bit, if you can share, about how machine learning is helping to drive competitiveness and innovation in companies today, and you know, any any tips you have for companies as to how they can, you know, get involved even more. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I think that everything really starts with the business problem because I think that as we started this conversation, we were mentioning uh, words such as deep learning, machine learning, AI. Uh, so it's a lot of companies, they just want to do this because they think that they're missing something. So my first suggestion for them is really trying to understand what's the business question that they have, if there is a business problem that they they can uh, solve, if there is a, an operation uh, that they can improve. So these are all interesting questions that they can ask themselves, their teams. And then as, long, as soon as uh, they have these uh, question in mind, the second step is understand if they have the data, the right data that are needed to support this, uh, uh, this process that is going to help them with the business question. So uh, after that you understand uh, the, the data, I mean, you, that you understand if you have the right data. The other step is, of course, you have to understand if you have also external data and if you have enough data, as we were saying, because this is very, very important as a first step in your uh, machine learning journey. And, uh, uh, and you know, it's important also to be able to translate the business question into a machine learning question. Like, for example, uh, in a supervised learning, which is an area of uh, machine learning, we have what is called the regression. A regression is a, a great uh, uh, type of model that is great for uh, to answer questions such as how many, how much. So if you are a retailer and you want to predict how uh, much, uh, how many uh, sales of a specific product you are going to have in the next two weeks, for example, the regression model is going to be a good. Uh, 
first a point, first step for you to start your machine learning journey. So the translation of the uh, business problem into a machine learning question, so as a consequence uh, into a machine learning algorithm is also very important. And then finally, uh, I would say that you always have to make sure that uh, you uh, are able to deploy this uh, machine learning model so that your environment is ready for the deployment and what we call the operationalization part. Because this is really the moment in which you are going to allow the other people, meaning internal stakeholders, other teams in your company, to consume the machine learning model. And that's the moment really in which you are going to add business value to your machine learning solution. So mm, yeah, I, I, my, my suggestion for companies who want to start this journey is really to make sure that they have clear these steps, because I think that if they have clear these steps, then their team, their developers, their data scientists are going to work together to build these hand-to-hand -hand solutions. Francesca Lazzeri, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you, thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Microsoft Ignite.